Hey guys, I'm Jared, and today we're talking about what's new in board gaming as of October 8th, 2021. I'll be covering the latest news, announcements, most played games, hot new Kickstarters and crowdfunded games, and more related to board gaming for the past two weeks. At the end, I'll also be sharing what's going on behind the scenes with my YouTube channel, Meeple Mentor. So stick around, we've got a lot to cover. Leave me a like and comment on what kinds of updates that you want to hear more about to make sure you don't miss my news updates, new video tutorials, and our podcast episodes. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube and your preferred streaming platform. Looking first at Kickstarter crowdfunding games, up first is a block stacking strategy game called Moku Tower. Players will stack oddly shaped wooden pieces to make a tower that has a simple beauty of Japanese design. Master timing, stacking, and strategy to win. It is very popular and hit its funding goal in three hours. You have three weeks left to check it out. The popular series Red Dragon Inn is getting an all new game in its universe called Tales from the Red Dragon Inn. It's an adventure co-op game for one to four players featuring a multi-scenario campaign. Each scenario has its own map, new foes, tricky puzzles, and unique objectives. The game has six possible heroes with miniatures and abilities, over 150 cards and 20 scenarios. Check it out. From Phase Shift Games, check out Drop Drive, a drop style sandbox sci-fi game for two to five players with the add-on. It plays in 30 minutes and has you exploring the vast reaches of infinite space. It's already funded with plenty of time to still back it. In other sci-fi game news, Mind Clash Games has a highly anticipated new game on Kickstarter right now called Voidfall. From David Turksey and Nigel Buckle with art by Ian O'Toole. It's a heavy Euro style space 4X game with tons of content. Repel the Void Born and restore the Dominium in either competitive or cooperative game modes, plus a solo mode. Explore, expand, exploit, and exterminate. If you've heard of it, you've probably already backed it just by looking at its numbers. On Kickstarter is an area control sci fi card game called Lost Empires, where players reap the most alien artifacts to build their own worm gate and crush enemy factions. It's a 30 minute game for two players, unless you buy the expansion to increase that count to one to four. Choose your unique factions to use, construct your deck, and lead your units to battle for control of the planet. If you like upgrading game components, check out the Kickstarter running now from Top Shelf Gamer for four volumes of deluxe tokens. Each volume is themed and comes with six types of upgraded tokens for use in a variety of board games. They're made of metal or high quality plastic with a nice paint job. If you're interested to see more, I made an unboxing video on my channel looking at each box. A one to five player cooperative narrative puzzle adventure game is funding on Kickstarter called The Vandermist Dossier. There are no closed envelopes or boxes. Every puzzle has a narrative justification and everything you need to solve it with all the given components like newspaper clippings, emotional letters, illustrated maps, and more. It's designed for you to play and beat it in one or two three hour sessions. Critical Care The Game is a one to four player cooperative game made by real doctors and has players treating patients and saving lives through successfully completing medical procedures. It's played mostly through cards, but also with tokens. You have seven days to save your patients in the ICU. Keep the heroes out. It's a 45 minute cooperative dungeon defense game for one to four players. It has a modular board and various scenarios to play through offering their own maps. Players get to be a dungeon monster with unique abilities. There's tons of charming screen printed meeples and tokens. Plus it has deck building. I think this one looks really interesting. Hair of the Dog is a new Kickstarter game. Also the name of the trendy pub to bring dogs to. No one in your friend circle has a dog and you all want to pet one. You must get a variety of scratching styles from unique dogs. You must satisfy the dog's picky conditions before they let you pet them. And of course, you can't get shamed out of the bar by not regularly buying drinks. Pet the dogs better than your friends without getting shamed to win. It's for two to eight players. 
just launched this week is Zoo King, a two to four player card game that plays in 30 minutes. Build the zoo of your dreams, collect diverse sets of animals, and compete to win the most awards for your zoo. Head to the campaign page and you can get a link to the game on Tabletop Simulator to try it out. For a unique type of game that also plays in 30 minutes, check out Don't Go In There. From the designers of Canvas, wander into a creepy haunted house and undo the curse you've accidentally let loose. The box converts into a dice tower where you'll be rolling glow-in-the-dark dice. They're calling it a push-your-luck set destruction game. It's for two to four players and is $25 for a base game pledge. The filmmaking board game Roll Camera is getting a reprint on Kickstarter with a new expansion called the B-Movie Expansion. Use cards and dice to build your storyboard for your movies. It's for one to four players and plays in 45 to 90 minutes. Magnet Cubes Cube Climbers is a game on Kickstarter that's all about ascending a tower by stacking cubes, pushing opponents, and unleashing magic powers. Build motorized marble coasters with the Lift Pack. It's for two to four players and plays on a 3D tower built each game. Stefan Feld has a Kickstarter going right now in partnership with Queen Games called The City Collection. The collection will release reimagined versions of previous titles along with new games. These will have a matching style and aesthetic featuring cities from around the world. Hamburg, Amsterdam, New York, and Marrakesh. Get them all and you'll see a continuous panorama along the sides of the boxes. A unique worker placement game hit Kickstarter this week called Federation, which uses double-sided workers that trigger different effects in the game. There's double layered individual player boards and lots of screen printed meeples. Become the most influential and prestigious delegation of the Federation. There's a ton of content here, which promises to be a very interactive Euro game. Check it out. A large 4X game is funding now called Fractal Beyond the Void, a compact and dynamic strategy game in an ever-changing, story-driven legacy setting. Take command of an emerging galactic empire that will explore the universe, uncover secrets, compete to dominate habitable planets, and fight over resources, prestige, and power. It's for two to four players and plays in 30 minutes per player. There's asymmetric factions, random board layouts, events, and objectives that keep the game highly replayable. Mythwind is a beautiful, persistent world co-op game where you become a pioneer in a whimsical fantasy world. Each choice and progress made in a session will impact the world and carry forward to future game sessions. Each character is unique and players cooperatively build the town and go on adventures. The story develops organically with an emerging narrative. It looks really good. Gods and Heroes is a drafting and deck building battle game of strength and prestige between warring gods and their subjects. Build temples of worship to bolster your armies and weaken your foes. Use your heroes to crush your enemies. Check out their campaign page for more info. It ends on the 21st. Launched this week is the co-op game Beast and funded in 16 minutes. It can also be played as a one versus many. The Beast moves around the map in secret, vengeful for unsuspecting villagers. Players are the hunters tasked with protecting the settlements by tracking and killing all the beasts before too many die. Lastly, Dungeons of Dragmar is a dynamic and fast game for one to four players full of dungeons, monsters, items, curses, and more. Hire heroes, purchase items, choose a dungeon to explore, fight your way to the boss to kill him, and return to town with his head to gain fame. Then go on another quest. The art in this looks fantastic. In industry news, at the Dice Tower Autumn Spectacular was a big announcement about the first ever World Series of board gaming with gold championship rings and a $25,000 grand prize. There will be 16 games included in the tournament and will be held next year from September 28th to October 2nd. Tickets will go on sale November 1st. More info about it will be coming throughout this month, but you can check out their webpage for more at www.wsbgchampionship.com. The attendance of this year's Gen Con was 35,000, about half of how many came the previous year. The exhibitor count was 320, also down by about half. 
Next year's Gen Con dates were also announced August 4th through 7th. Origins Game Fair was last week in Columbus, Ohio. Over 200 exhibitors and 2,000 events throughout the week. One company that wasn't there was the Gaming Goat and its CEO, Jeff Berggren. After many reported cases of harassment by Berggren, the GAMA determined that both the actions of the company and Berggren were in violation of the Code of Conduct. They've been expelled from the show. This all comes after the controversy a few weeks ago about possible racist imagery in their current Kickstarter game, Tournament Fishing. Asmodee and Days of Wonder are releasing a limited edition train and station set for Ticket to Ride in November. It's Ticket to Ride Play Pink and is a result of a fundraising charity partnership to raise money for the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. It will come in a tin box and sell for $4.95 with $2 of that going towards BCRF. Restoration Games and Mondo Games have restructured their partnership surrounding the release of the popular Unmatched Battle Game series. Under the new arrangement, Restoration will be the publisher and Mondo will handle the licensor relationships. The most recent release for the Unmatched series was by Mondo Games for the Deadpool mini expansion. I did an unboxing for that if you're interested. Also in industry news, Kaman Games has bought up the Italian TTRPG studio called Two Little Mice. They made the Broken Compass games and the Household RPG. Lastly, price increases have been announced for Munchkin, Zombie Dice, and Illuminati game products, all from Steve Jackson Games. The increases will start on January 1st and are attributed to increased overhead, manufacturing, and shipping costs. If you are looking at picking these up, you might want to do it before the end of the year. Genius Games funded a new science-themed game this year called Cellulose, a plant cell biology game. It will also be coming to retail for those who didn't back it. It's a worker placement engine building game where players compete over resources needed to make photosynthesis happen. It's a direct sequel to their 2017 game, Cytosis. It's for one to five players and will retail for $45. They also unveiled First in Flight about the Wright brothers' first time flying a plane in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. It's a deck building game and will be coming next year in the second or third quarter. Steamforged Games announced another board game in their Resident Evil video game adaptions. Resident Evil the board game, based off the original video game of the series, will be coming to Kickstarter October 26th. It will be standalone from their other two titles, Resident Evil 2 and 3. Kaman's new game, Ankh Gods of Egypt, will have a new expansion this month called Pantheon. It adds five more gods to choose from at the beginning of the game with unique powers. It requires the base game to play and allows one to five players. It will retail for $59.99. The Goonies movie is getting another board game in November, this time an escape room style. The Goonies Escape with One-Eyed Willie's Rich Stuff, a coded chronicles game, has players decode clues to get the answers needed to reach the inferno. It's for one or more players, ages 12 and up. AEG's popular dice engine building game Space Base is getting an expansion in Q2 next year. It's called Space Base The Mysteries of Terra Proxima and adds new narrative content to the game, new ships, and new scenarios to combine with the base game. It's for 2-5 to five players ages 15 and up and will retail for $34.99. The 2007 pirate game Jamaica is getting a revised edition from Asmodee and Space Cowboy. It's a racing game for two to six players going around the island to collect the most gold before the circuit is complete. The first printing will be coming November 26th. Steffenfeld's Bonfire is getting an expansion in Q4 called Trees and Creatures. Expand your game with three new modules that can be added as you want, including being able to add a fifth player to the game. Tree tiles can be placed above path tiles and unlock bonuses and new ways to score points. The new creature cards provide unique abilities for players. The expansion will retail for $39.99. The Dark Knight Returns graphic novel is getting a game next year in the first quarter with a regular and deluxe edition offered. It's from Cryptozoic Entertainment and includes a board, over 200 cards, 160 tokens, standees, dice, and more. 
The deluxe version adds miniatures. Each scenario takes 90 minutes to play. An Agatha Christie short story is becoming a board game from Hunt a Killer. It's called the Mystery Hunter's Lodge Murder Mystery Game. Be the detective trying to solve the murder of a millionaire. There's realistic crime scene reports, documents, personal effects from various characters, maps, and more. It's coming October 25th with a collector's edition in December. Heidelbar Games is releasing two new card games soon. Blaze is all about changing alliances and getting rid of cards to collect as many Firebird feathers as possible. It's releasing later this month. It'll be for three to five players ages 10 and up. Animal Poker will be coming this winter and has players taking turns playing sets of matching cards with the next player playing an equal number with the same or higher card value. Whoever empties their hand first becomes the boss for the next round. It's for four to eight players, ages eight and up. The Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid are getting a Christmas-themed expansion in November called Santa vs. Hexmas Holiday Pack, expected to retail for $20. Patchwork will be getting a Halloween edition this month by Lookout Games. Create spooky quilts with eyeballs and patches. It's a two-player game that plays in 30 minutes and will retail for $29.99. Alice Cooper's Horror Box is a humorous party game coming October 20th and approved by Cooper himself. It has questions, answers, and dares involving horror movies. It will retail for $24.99. A new historical board game from Osprey Games is coming November 11th called Brian Boru High King of Ireland. Players seek to unite Ireland under their rule through might, cunning, and matrimony. Forge alliances to fend off Vikings, build monasteries, and rally towns and villages to their cause. It's for 3-5 to five players ages 14 and up and plays in 60-90 to 90 minutes. Also from Osprey Games, check out Crescent Moon, an asymmetric area control game set in the 10th century Middle East. Five factions compete for victory with different yet interconnected ways. It is scheduled to release in the summer of 2022. In November, check out the 1-5 to five player card game Tranquility that takes place in a sea filled with many different islands. Become the crew of the ship trying to reach the perfect island paradise. Work together, but in silence. You won't be able to speak, yet coordinate your play to win. On November 12th, Asmodee is releasing an expedition game by Ludanova called Sumatra. It's Reiner Knizia's newest game, and it has players head into the largest volcanic island in Indonesia. It has set collection and card drafting mechanisms. It's for two to five players and plays in 45 minutes, will retail for $39.99. Asmodee also announced a definitive edition of their game Kingsburg coming November 12th. It will include all the expansions to date and a new scenario. It's for two to five players ages 10 and up and plays in two hours, expected to retail for $59.99. Next year, Peterson Games is releasing Call of Cthulhu Terror Paths, a new standalone board game in the universe of Lovecraftian horror. Players are investigators in cooperation to identify the menace lurking below the surface solve arcane mysteries, gain insight, and find what you need to stop it. It can be played over multiple scenarios or in one shot for the whole campaign. It's for one to six players and plays in 20 minutes per player. WizKids is launching a game next April called Squid Incorporated about office politics in the ocean's largest corporation. Ascend the corporate ladder, hire employees, arrange promotions, and sabotage rivals. It all takes place under the sea and is a fantastical nautical strategy game for two to four players ages 14 and up. Looking at what's going on with the Meeple Mentor YouTube channel, Jay and I recently recorded six or seven new Jay's Takeaways videos. It's good to get ahead of schedule. His most recent one was on Celestia, which is a cool push your luck game. Our most recent podcast episode was a top 10 list on best board games with multiple game boards. It was a cool category to make a list for. Just having player boards and one main game board wasn't enough to qualify. There needed to be more than one main game board that all players use or participate in. In our next episode, we'll be discussing our most recent trips to game conventions in the past month. He went to Dice Tower Retreat in Miami, and I went to a local con in Raleigh called TVGT. 
My most recent tutorial video was for the game Horrified, a co-op themed around the classic Universal monster movies. I like to have one of my tutorials during October be themed somehow around Halloween. I like watching horror movies, so covering this game was a real treat. Thanks for tuning in to today's news update. I appreciate your support, and remember, teach when you can, but always be learning. See you next time.